how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at a 2014 Ram 2500 truck with a Cummins diesel engine in it. This is setting a VGT communications error code. So the first thing I want to do is I need to get a scan tool we need to communicate it to the DLC so we can pull some data from the engine control unit so we know what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We have the scan tool connected to this Cummins diesel control unit and I pulled the, the codes. So let's take a look. We have a turbocharger boost control circuit performance. We lost communication with the turbocharger control module. This is the code the shop is chasing and this is why I'm here looking at this vehicle. We have uh, excessive NOx reading and it's deactivated the EGR and we have implausible data from the NOx. Now we have two NOx codes and we have a turbo and a communication. Now on these vehicles, the NOx sensor and the VGT are on the same CAN communication line to the engine control module. So I know that, so what I want to do first is I want to go ahead and I want to get into the wires at the VGT. That's the control for the turbo gates. And I want to go ahead and I want to get into CAN high, CAN low, and the power and ground and then we want to watch these signals to see what's happening to that CAN bus or the power and ground. So let's go ahead and get connected. So we've connected the scope down here to the VGT control module. Channel 1 is yellow, it's connected to CAN high. Channel 2 is red, it's connected to CAN low. Channel 3 is green, it's connected to the control module ground. Channel 4 is blue, it's connected to the power to the VGT module. Now is what we want to do is go in and take a look at these signals. We have the scope connected to the VGT module, so now we want to go ahead and get the data. So let's go ahead and what we want to do is we want to deep record. So basically the blue is the power, the green is the ground, yellow is CAN high, red is CAN low. So I need to stop this and we want to go ahead and we want to zoom in on a little section here. And now I can see this and I can see that I got some little voltage drops in the power and the ground and they basically look like they're in the same place. So if I put a strike through there, do you see how it lines up? So these, this is something turning on and off. I would think that would be injectors. So I'm not sure what that is right now, but we'll come back to that. I just see it since I'm looking at it. The CAN bus looks normal. If you notice, my bias is 2.5, and these are the module communications. Now I do see something that's a little different right here. So what we've got right here is we can see that we're talking, and right here there's a higher module talking. In other words, there's, he's pull, being pulled up a little bit. Right here is a better example. Do you see how I've got, these are sort of level and then this is higher. The whole packet size went up and that packet is on one module and I can see it repetitious. Do you see how he talked here and he talked here? And then he's higher. Now I can tell you I'm not real worried about that because these systems are really robust and I don't think that's going to be a problem but it's just something that I notice. So right now I really don't see a problem with the power of the ground. They seem to be working right now and this is some type of an intermittent problem. So one thing I want to do is I want to go and I want to get up with the scan tool and I want to clear the codes with the scan tool. So let me get this and we got the scan tool right here. Now what I want to do is I want to clear these codes. Now let me explain this. On many of these Dodge diesels like this, they'll run different codes when it are different uh, DTCs tests while it's running. So if it's sitting here idling, they'll just start running tests. One of these that I've seen these things run pretty quickly, like in five minutes or so, is it will apply that VGT, it'll make it turn. So first I want to go ahead and we want to get out of here and I want to go to erase codes. So we want to go ahead and now we've got it set up to where we can erase them.
So it says we were successful. I want to reread them and I want to make sure they're gone. And they are. So now what I want to do is I want to go to live data and I want to go get the VGT engine data so we can graph it and when it starts to open then I'll know that the test started to run. Okay, so this is at the bottom of the list down here for what we want to look for. So right here we've got the VGTs. I'm going to select both and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick those. I want to graph them. So now this is graphing those so when they start to open I'll be able to see when those open and then we'll match that against what's happening here. So we're going to go ahead and start this. We're going to start the car up. Okay, this is the starter pulling on the power. This is the power to the uh, VGT module. This is the ground, this is CAN high, and this is CAN low. And this is the scan tool. And is what we're waiting for is the scan tool to provide us with data when the VGT is applied. And it's going to automatically do that once I clear the codes and I let it just sit here and run. It's going to go ahead and run a VGT test. And it doesn't always do that, but a lot of times it will. And about three to five minutes after start, I'll get a test run. When that happens, I want to go ahead and I want to shut the scope off. And then we want to look at the data on the scope once the test is run. Okay, we just had the test run. You can see it that it moved the VGT and I stopped the screen. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to look at the scope data during the test. So let's go ahead and do that. I want to take the zoom window and I can see right here where I had the, an elevated ground rise and I can see where I had a drop in my power. So I want to go ahead and I want to take the zoom window and I want to look in this area. Now, as what you can see right here is you can see where right here I had the bus fail. Do you see where this bus railed high and railed low? So this has to do with, remember, this has to continue to have a 2.5 bias. And if we do go high and low, we need to have pulses happening. But that, this is having a problem right now doing that. So right here we have a failure and I could see where I have a power and a ground problem occurring very lightly. So now is what I want to do is I want to go and put an amp clamp on this and I want to watch the current flow to this. A lot of times what will happen with these type modules is the turbo gets all carboned and it's trying to move the veins and it gets stuck and the motor pulls so hard that it will reset the module and I'll have a CAN bus problem like this from a high current draw. So to prove that out I want to put an amp clamp on it. I can see where we had a power ground problem and we had a bus disruption. So let's get an amp clamp on this vehicle and then let's do the test again. We've added an amp clamp and we've set it on the 20 amp scale that goes to the power wire to the VGT module. Now that we have the amp clamp connected to the VGT module, um, let's go ahead and set the scope up. So we put that on channel 4, so we need to come in and we're going to pick the 20 amp position. And then I want to zero it. So now we're ready, so now we're going to go get the data. We're going to go ahead and start the car. So we're going to go ahead and let this run. And we're going to wait for it to run a self-test because it's going to try to run the self-test again. And again, that takes about three to five minutes. We ran the test over here and we just set our code. So now, let's go back over here and let's check this and let's uh, check our code, read codes. So right here we've got our codes all reset so it definitely reset our code. 
So now let's go ahead and look at the scope data. Okay, so now that we've got the test to run, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So here's my data that we stopped. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Now I can see we're at a really high current event right here. Now the current event, I can see that I had a current event right here that took the bus out, but I can see this one right here too. So let's zoom in on these so we can better see them. Here I had a really high current event and the bus goes out. I had the same thing happen again right here. I have high current and when I have high current I rail these. Do you see how I no longer have a 2.5 bias in there. They separate and there's no pulses. This is failing and it's failing because I pulled 10 and a half amps of current. Now normally these things you're going to see them pull maybe five or six. I think by seven or eight they set codes. Uh, that's what my memory says. This is pulling 10, 12 amps. There's no way. When you pull that much, the current all goes to the motor and then the logic in the module doesn't have any current to supply it and that's why we lose this bus structure. What's really happening is there's these veins inside the turbo and we're moving them and that directs the air velocity and it changes during the load whether I'm at light load or heavy load and it makes the turbos keep spinning real fast so I make more pressure under light load and then they open up during heavy load. Now that module is controlling this and the carbon gets built up in the vein system in the gates and they can no longer move easily and when they bind then they pull a whole lot of current because when you stall a motor, the motor's still trying to turn, but it can't turn, so it pulls more current. That's what we're seeing on the screen. This is the high pull right here from when they're getting stuck. Same as over here. Notice how high the ground came up as well. And notice the ground came up. The ground doesn't have a problem, guys. The ground has a problem because we're pulling 10 or 12 amps. That should never pull that much. We should be less than half of this on its pull. This is just telling me it's getting stuck. So what needs to happen on this is the turbo is going to need to come off of this engine and it's going to need to be taken apart and cleaned. If you put the VGT module on this car, you've made an $800 mistake because it's not going to fix it. What this is, is the turbo is carboned and it sticks the veins and then the module is still commanding it because it wants it to turn and I pull so much current away trying to make that vein turn that now the logic doesn't have enough current to operate and I lose my CAN bus and set codes. Now the knock sensor is setting codes but the knock sensor didn't set a code because it's bad. It's on the same bus as this. So the VGT is what's causing the problem and nothing electronic is bad here. This is a mechanical failure. But I've seen several shops now put the VGT module in for this problem and they don't fix the car. So you need to be really careful. You need to go through with a logical thought out process like I've laid out here for you. You need to use a scope or you're not going to find the problem. The scan tool is not going to show what's really happening with this problem. The scope clearly shows the problem and it's a pretty quick easy diagnosis. If you guys use this type of thought process, quality tools, you too will be successful in your base.